Hi everybody, a very good day to one and all on today's show. This is uh, episode six, so it's not just a phase I'm going through, I guess. Okay, I've drawn up my top 20 films of the 70s, and I've got one or two little stories from this period of time. But first... I've been delayed uh, in getting this show out to you all. Unfortunately, I managed to get COVID. Uh, Myself and my wife have been so vigilant in our fight to stay healthy. I mean, we don't go out to restaurants, uh, we don't go to pubs, cinemas, or anywhere there'd be lots of people. And at work, I avoid customers like the plague. Whoops. Excuse the pun. And I wash my hands regularly. Now, we can't for medical reasons have the jab or the booster. But as I've said, we really go out on a limb to stay safe. Where did you catch it, Steve? I hear you ask in a concerned manner. No, no, you are concerned, aren't you? No, come on, stop sniggering, I'm being serious. Uh, I got it from a place of work. I'll let that statement settle for a moment or two. But I'm the innocent party who has to pay the price of Covid and all the misery that it comes with. My wife, incidentally, has had, has now had uh, COVID. Sorry, getting tongue twisted again. Uh, hers lasted, lasted. <laughs> Come on, Steve, less than a week, whereas mine was for nearly two weeks. Now that to me doesn't make sense, does it to you? Anyway, there we are, done it, got the t-shirt. Well, I've got the t-shirt, but you know, it makes you feel like getting one, doesn't it? Class across your chest. I've had COVID. Anyway, let's move it along. Uh, in the last show, I made a bit of a boo-boo. I incorrectly named Richie Cunningham from Happy Days as having the name of Ron Harris. How I came out with that is beyond me. I do write a bit of a script and had the correct name of Ron Howard jotted down. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my 70s TV program, the top 20 of. Okay, let's start my top 20 films from the 70s. Um, As I said on the last show, um, I thought it would take some digging up to compile a top 20 from the 70s. Uh, And to be honest, it wasn't easy. It consumed quite a bit of a time, actually. Uh, But that doesn't mean there was little to choose from. In fact, there are loads of films I clean forgot about. There are many to forget about, some so terrible that people can't even sell them out of car boots for 50p. Then there were some films I was convinced that had come out in the 70s but turned out to be the early 80s. So there was a minefield to wander through, but wander through I did. Um, It would have been easier for me to include film series, you know, they could have done like, you know, five or six spots on the top uh, 20, but I think that would have been a bit of a poor reflection on my film choices. So without further ado, let's kick my chop topping compilation into action. In at number 20, The Tower Inferno, which was in cinemas in 1974. The director was John Gulliman, I hope I spelled that right, I pronounced that right. It's spelled G-U-I-L-L-E-R-M-A-N and had a star-studded cast of Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, William Holden, Faye Dunaway. I saw this film at the Savoy Cinema, and to be bluntly honest with you, I found it a little bit boring in parts. But it's a film from the 70s, and I'm only listing the films that I've seen. Okay, so in at number 19, we've got The Stepford Wives. Released in 1975. God, I was only into my first year of county secondary school back then. This film was directed by Brian Forbes, starring Catherine Ross, Paula Prentice, Peter Madison, and Nanette Newman. Now, I'm sure Nanette Newman was an English actress who appeared in those washing up detergent adverts on the telly. 
Or am I thinking of somebody completely different? Go on. No, 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 no. Go on. Tell me. Anyway, number 18 is a brilliant film called Coma, which is in the cinemas in 1978 and was directed by Michael Crichton. This film had actors and actresses such as Michael Douglas, Rip Torn, no really, that is a name, picture it, I christened this child Rip Torn, must have been hell at school. It also starred uh, Genevieve Bougeon and, do you like that? That's pretty Frenchy, wasn't it? Uh, and Elizabeth Ashley. The storyline is this. A young female doctor starts to notice an unnatural amount of coma cases. She uncovers a horrible conspiracy. Now, I have this film at number 18, but it is an incredible film. And I demand that you watch it, okay? I don't demand, I ask nicely. Okay, so, whoops, I hit the microphone then. Did you hear that? I ain't gonna edit it out. Nah. Number 17, Duel, D-U-E-L, yeah, from 1971. And this was directed by Steven Spielberg. It stars Dennis Weaver, Jacqueline Scott, Eddie Firestone, and Lou Frizzle. Apart from Dennis Reaver, I haven't a clue who the rest are or what they have starred in since. This film is about a travelling salesman being hounded by a large juggernaut. Near misses and near crashes are plenty. If I remember correctly, I don't think you ever learned the identity of the juggernaut driver. But there is one scene where the film cuts to a chase and for a few valuable seconds the car turns into Starsky's car from Starsky and Hutch. Yep. No, I kid you not. Complete with white stripe. Then it rever reverts back to a solid red car. Now, was this a little teaser from Mr. Spielberg giving us a glimpse of the forthcoming Starsky and Hutch? Just saying, you know, getting it out there. There are some trivial things in life which my brain doesn't let go of. Don't look worried, I am sane. Well, sometimes. Number 16, and this is another long film. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Do, 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 do. Uh, no, there won't be any more of that. You are safe. Uh, it was in cinemas in 1977. This was a great Spielberg film and was out the same year as Star Wars. Incidentally, Spielberg and George Lucas were, and are, very good friends. Stick around guys, you're going to learn all sorts from me. The year this film was out, I was at school camp at St. Burien. Mm, don't ask please, just don't ask. Anyway, school camp was great, and we did shed loads of things. And Dale stole my girl. Sorry, no I'm sorry. I'm still not bitter about that. Why do I want to sing Love on the Rocks? Hey, no big surprise. Okay, I've inwardly counted to ten. Let's continue. We were taken to St. Eyes for one afternoon. The place was crawling in emmets. That's visitors in new money. And the weather was grey. So three or four, to, four of us thought we'd go to the cinema for something to do. We sat aloft in the circle. That's high up in the semicircle seating area and watched Close Encounters all afternoon. Loved it. But we told teachers that we were studying old architecture of St. Ives so we wouldn't get into trouble. Okay, so number 15. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This was 1975. It was directed by Terry Gilliam and Terry Jones. It starred Graham Chapman, John Cleese, Eric Idle and Terry Gillingham. I watched this a year after it came out and I think if memory, memory serves me well, we watched it when we were at Arnie S. Rotten in Swindon when I was a seeker there. There you go, a bit of a n nonsense information that you really needed in your life. Right, number 14 is Greece. Greece is the word, is the word. 
I'm singing again. Uh, this was out in 1978 and starred, of course, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Or as the joke went, John Revolta and Olivia Neutron Bomb. Yeah, okay, it was funny at the time. Uh, although we never admitted it to anyone, my mate and fellow punk rocker, Steve, s we snuck in to watch this just to see what all the fuss was about. We came out pleasantly surprised, but we never ever told anyone. You lot know now, but I can trust you guys. Can't I? Okay, number 13, and not unlucky, is Westworld, starring Yul Brynner as an android. It came out in 1973, and this is how it goes. Adult guests visit an interactive all right stop sniggering they visit an interactive amusement park containing lifelike androids no 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 stop stop i can see where you're going with this anyway they act out their favorite scenarios in like the wild west or medieval settings but the androids malfunction and chaos reigns for the year of release this film is ahead of its time and is a bloody good film. It's 88 minutes long and made $10 million in the box office. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? In this day and age, that's impressive. So we move on to number 12, and this is Saturday Night Fever, starring John Travolta and featured mainly music by the Bee Gees. So take yourself back to the glittery disco and let your feet dance and hope the glue keeping your earpiece holds out no seriously it's a great film and well worth a watch now number 11 is grizzly and was in the cinemas from 1976 and it's a story about an 18 foot yeah believe it or not 18 foot that's 5.5 meters in new money grizzly bear and is attacking people in a national park the bear that was actually filmed for the movie was 11 foot tall, which is impressive. Now, seriously, the film is class PG, and, and in some cases as an fifth, as sorry, are we getting tongue tied again, was classed as a 15 years of age picture. It is pretty scary even for those categories. Well, it scared me anyway, but then again, I'm easily scared. Moving along, we're at number 10. And it is, of course, Star Wars, which came out in 1977 and was by George Lucas. I need to say no more. It is still a quite brilliant film to watch. I remember back, oh, what, why the collective groan then? You know, I know, I know, here comes one of Steve's memorable during the 70s moments. But yeah, I remember that our local shop, the Spa, had shreddies, that's the cereal, at 25p a box, and inside was Star Wars transfers. So I bought two boxes and stuck the transfer to my cassette cases holding my various top 20 recordings. Bloody hell, was I sick of shreddies after that? I can hear my parents now. Eat the bloody things! More money than cents! Your eyes are bigger than your belly! Nope, I just wanted them transfers, actually. Um, still on the cassette boxes to this day. So, you know what? Value for money, I think. <laughs> anyway. Now, number nine. Hang on a moment. Where did I put my trumpet? Oh, that hurt my throat doing that then. Yes, you've guessed it. The Godfather. And this film was out in 1972 and was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. It starred Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, James Caan, and Diana Keaton. Uh, this film grossed $134.97 million. <whistles> Quite a staggering amount. I highly recommend you watch the whole box of the films. You won't be disappointed. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. 
Okay, I had to do that. You knew I had to do that. Okay, moving along to number eight. And it's Alien. And it was available to watch from 1979. And is, of course, by Ridley Scott. It starred uh, Signori, Signori Weaver, God, a mouthful, isn't it? as Ripley, who survives the terrifying beast. From that first viewing, I became paranoid. While sitting, eating, and somebody starts to moan about stomach pains, I was off. Legged it. Down the road. Adios. <laughs> Seriously, though, the majority of the cast knew nothing of the exploding stomach that was about to happen. Uh, Ridley Scott wanted to shock and discuss the whole of the table in order to achieve a classic cinema moment. And I say, well done. Okay, so here we go. Number seven. The Deer Hunter, which was in cinemas from 1978 and was directed by Michael Simono, C-I-M-I-N-O. I made a balls up of that, but anyway, this film was one of the first to relay the effects of soldiers who fought in the Vietnam War. I love this film for two reasons. Reason one, it's a fantastic film. And reason two, the theme music. Now I heard the music long before I ever watched the film. It was in the charts. Uh, John Williams played this piece and it's truly beautiful. If memory serves me correctly, he played it on a 12 stringed acoustic guitar. Do yourself a favor, then load this piece of music and listen to it and then watch the film. You will not regret it, I assure you. Number six, Jaws. This was a movie masterpiece and still sends shivers down my spine. It was another one of Spielberg's works and was in cinemas from 1975. It starred Roy Schneider, Robert Shaw, Richard Dreyfus, Dreyfus, D-R-E-Y-F-U-S. I'm useless on these names today. And Lorraine Gary. Now, number five. Uh, where the hell did I put my banjo? Yes, you are correct. I ain't got one. And me acoustic and electric guitar just won't do. The film in number five is Deliverance. This is a film from 1972 and stars Burt Reynolds. Sort of launched his career, really. It was by an Irish director called John Borman. Uh, I used to have a good mate called Rob. and Both him and myself were a little fanatical on this film. Well, unhinged if you prefer. We worked alongside each other at a supermarket, and sometimes, as we worked, we'd reenact scenes from Deliverance. On one occasion, we were well into our stride when a voice came from behind us. I'm going to do the voice now. I want you to squeal, boy. We both turned around to find a customer who we didn't know joining in. We laughed uncontrollably. Those were the days. Anyway, less about that. Number four. The Lord of the Rings, 1978. This is the animated adapted version of J.R.R. Tolkien's novel. Now I first watched this on a VHS cassette hired from a video library. Now, some of you I lost at VHS, didn't I? Do your research. The film lasted two hours and 12 minutes and I was always unhappy at the end because they never finished the movie. They ran out of money or some of them other. So I'm led to believe. Many years later, I see a DVD version version in Woolworths for one ninety nine or something like that. It might have been one seventy nine. I don't know. So for old time's sake, I thought I'd buy it. And to my delight, because I'm easily pleased, they'd finished the film. Whoopee! Okay, we're really at the business end of things now, people. Uh, number three, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, uh, 1970, and runs for one hour and 35 minutes. It is the second of five films. That was my phone just going off then. Did you hear that? I bet it's my wife to say, I'm on my way home. Put the coffee on. But anyway, 
let's finish this before she gets home. Um, it's the second of five films and directed by Ted Frost and stars Charlton Heston, James Franciscus, Kim Hunter, Maurice Evans and Linda Harrison. After appearing in the first movie, Charlton Heston didn't want to star in another movie of the apes. After a huge persuasion, he agreed to appear in the film, but only if his character was killed off and so he was free to apply his time to other ventures. The money he made from beneath the planet of the apes was given to charity and this was his choice. In fact, it only took eight days of filming to complete his role in the film. Number two, Watership Down, a 1978 animated film with the theme tune of Bright Eyes sung by Art Garfunkel. Um, it was produced and presented by Martin Rosen and was based on the 1972 novel by Richard Adams. It includes the voices of John Hurt, uh, Richard Byers, amongst many others. Uh, I must apologise to my three children. Uh, years ago, I let them watch it on TV, thinking they'd love it, but they found it traumatic. Put that one down to experience, Stevie Boy. That being said, it's a remarkable film and well worth the watch. So, this brings me to my number one. And right from the beginning um, of my quest to compile the top 20, it was always going to be Top Dog. Without further ado, here it is. Salem's Lot, which was out in 1979 and viewing time lasted a whopping three hours and four minutes. Yeah, I own it now on a two DVD box set. It stars David Soul, you know, Starsky and Hutch fame, and James Mason, who apparently jumped at the chance of being the villain. Now, the director-producer is Toby Hooper, who also gave us uh, Poltergeist, you know, the first one, the best one. My personal view is that Salem's Lot was, and is, by far the best horror movie ever made, but don't take my word for it. Go and watch it. Well, that was a journey, wasn't it? I'm thinking that I'm nearing the end of my 70s look back. I'm going to come back soon with a new program. I'm just not sure what yet. I'm thinking something a little risky, controversial, and something we could all relate to. Once again, thank you for popping in. Remember to check out uh, Fab2 Investigations on YouTube and Spotify. This is Steve Richards saying, please stay safe and we'll speak again soon. <laughs>